Hey everyone, we're going to be doing Mending Wall by Robert Frost. So on the website I told you we're going to do two poems by Robert Frost. I'm going to go through both of them on this little video. You choose which one you want to write up, okay? doesn't matter to me. Um, both of these I've heard quoted and cited in many different ways in different places. And um, nearly always people misread them. So there's more going on than, than what people think. Um, Robert Frost is one of the great American poets. Okay, and he wrote, this one he wrote like in 1914. So he was early 20th century. And people had this romantic notion of him as this gentleman farmer in New England. But he, he wasn't that romantic. He was, um, he, he was hard on his family. He was kind of a difficult person. Um, and... He's not as sweet and gentle as everybody <laughs> imagines. I mean, he was a good man, but people read these poems a little bit wrong. So I'm going to go through both of these. Um, I'm not going to point out everything because I want you to find some stuff to point out. Okay. But I am going to point out a few things and, um, and show you how it's been misread. And then let you kind of go off on that and um, have your own insights to it. So first, let's go ahead and read this one. Mending Wall. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sends the frozen grand swell under it, and spills the upper boulders in the sun, and makes gaps even two can pass abreast. The work of hunters is another thing. I have come after them, oops, sorry. I have come after them and made repair, where they have left not one stone on a stone, but they would have the rabbit out of hiding to please the yelping dogs. The gaps, I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made. But at spring mending time, we find them there. I let my neighbor know beyond the hill, and on a day we meet to walk the line and set the wall between us once again. We keep the wall between us as we go, to each the boulders that have fallen to each, and some are loaves and some are nearly balls, and we have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. We wear our fingers rough with handling them. Oh, just another kind of outdoor game on the on, one on the side. It comes to little more. There where it is, we do not need a wall. Here I, here, sorry. He is alpine and I am apple orchard. My apple trees will never get across and eat the cones under his pines, I tell him. He only says good fences make good neighbors. Spring is the mischief in me, and I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. Let me slide that a little bit. Why do they make good neighbors? Isn't it where there are cows? But here there are no cows. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out, and to whom I was like to give offense. Something there is that doesn't love a wall, that wants it down. I could say elves to him, but it's not elves exactly, and I'd rather he said it for himself. I see him there bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand, like an old stone savage armed. He moves in darkness as it seems to me, not of woods only, and the shade of trees. He will not go behind his father saying, and he likes having the thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. All right. So this is the line that I hear over and over again. People say, good fences make good neighbors. We even had a, a neighbor years ago that wanted to build a fence between us and they used that line and I just about ripped my hair out because I'm like, you don't know how you're misquoting Frost. Okay, this is not what he's saying. Robert Frost does not like the idea of the wall. Okay, so let me erase this and I'm sorry I can't get it all into one page. I, I mean, I could, but it's a little bit too small. Okay, so so you can look at the imagery and, and the other items, but I wanted to show you these, these main ideas in here from Frost. And he begins, he says this line twice, something there is that doesn't love a wall, that sounds the frozen ground swell under it. It sounds like it's nature. Nature does not like this wall. And he doesn't come out and quite say it, but he says something there is, and, and so... He was, um, you know, he had a farm in New England. He was very, um, he was kind of a naturalistic poet. He loved to write about things outside. And so here he's talking about, you know, in, in nature, you don't find natural walls. You may find cliffs and, and other things that are kind of, you know, difficult to pass, but you don't find walls. 
And so he talks about this and he, he says, yeah, you've got, you've got these hunters, the work of hunters who will take apart a wall. Okay. And they are trying to let their dogs get to the rabbit. Okay. That whatever it's chasing. Um, and he's like, well, yeah, I know those ones, but this is different. The gaps, I mean, no one has seen the maid or heard them made. Okay. But in the springtime, they find him. And so he and his neighbor go out and they decide one on either side of the wall will walk along and then whatever rocks have fallen to their side, that's what they, they put them back up again. Okay. And, and they, uh, you know, a little bit of fun. Oh, they have to use a spell to make them balance. Stay where you are till our backs are turned. And he's saying, what is it that causes them to, to fall? You know, why, why is it, well, let me come back down here. If something there is that doesn't want this wall, I could say elves to him, but it's not elves exactly. Okay. So here we've got like little ideas of, of magic. Here we have a spell and elves um, have kind of a magic, definitely a magical connotation to them. But instead he's, he's hinting that it's actually nature. Nature has a bit of magic itself. And it is breaking down this wall when nobody's watching it and nobody's noticing. Okay. So then he tries to use a little bit of, of logic perhaps with his neighbor. Um, and he, he, uh, he says, where is, oh, here we go. Spring is the, is the mischief in me. And I wonder if I could put a notion in his head. So he's trying to, trying to teach him, a, give him a different idea. And he says, why do they make good neighbors? Okay. We have this idea and it's just, uh, I'm sorry, but I've heard this a lot here. <laughs> it's just the way things are. This is the way we've always done it. Okay, this is the way we've always done something. And and that's what his his neighbor is saying. Well, we're all, we've always built the wall. This is our saying. There's nothing else more to say about this. Okay? And he repeats it down here again. Good fences make good neighbors. This is why we're doing this. All right? Whereas um Frost is trying to get to the bottom of this. Why? Okay, he's asking this question why and it sounds like the farmer doesn't want to answer this, okay? He doesn't want to answer or he doesn't want to think about it. He's very much steeped in tradition, okay? This is what tradition has always said. His father has said this. If he goes against what his father is saying, he's breaking that tradition and you can't do that, okay? So the more that Frost presses him to try to figure out why, the more he kind of steals himself. No, I'm not going to say it. You know, there's no reason why. And and Frost gives some good notions. I mean, if they have cows, you know, if they've got an animal that's wandering across the border, yeah, you need to fence that in. Okay. Um, he says, but there are no cows here. We don't have that problem with something going back and across the front of the border all the time. We don't need to do that. And so here's the, here's the interesting couplet. I'm going to go ahead and put this in blue. And it's not really a couplet because it doesn't rhyme, but it's a, a great saying. Before I built a wall, I'd ask to know what I was walling in or walling out. Okay, what are we trying to keep in? Oh, maybe you're trying to keep in little kids. Maybe you're trying to keep in, I don't know. What are you trying to keep out? And that's what Frost is asking his neighbor is, um, are you trying to keep me away or am I trying to keep you away? What, what's the problem here? And his neighbor hasn't thought that far, obviously. His neighbor doesn't want to think about it. That's why he's giving him this... Oh, good fences make good neighbors. He doesn't want to think any deeper about it. And then the third line, and to whom I was like to give offense. Who am I offending by building this wall? Who am I offending by letting nature take it down? These are hard questions. These are interesting questions. And maybe there's a logical reason for the wall. Maybe there's not. Let's find out why we're doing this. That's what he's saying is don't just do something blindly because... This is what society says always to do. Ask, why are we doing this? Okay, so we were reading Huck Finn right now, and Huck is doing this all the time too. He is coming right up against society, telling him certain rules and certain ways to do things, and this is proper and that's proper, and he's going, no, it's not. Or actually, he'd say, no, it ain't. He's saying, this, this doesn't feel right, okay? Or maybe society says this is right, but I would rather be wrong. And so we got kind of the same vein here with Robert Frost. What is really the purpose of this? Why are we doing this? I just want answers. I just want to know. Okay, but his 
neighbor just can't do that. Okay, he says, I'd rather he say it for himself. I'd rather he even say that's elves. Yeah, go ahead and say it's elves. It sounds silly, but at least you've thought about it. If you come up with some reason, okay? But then we got this really neat piece of imagery right here, okay? Here's how he sees his neighbor. I see him there. So it's, it's obvious, like, I see him there bringing a stone grasped firmly by the top in each hand like an old stone savage armed, savage armed. So here he's saying his neighbor is like a savage, okay? And, and, he's, and he's using these stones as his weapons, okay? So it's kind of like this, the Neanderthal kind of guy. He's got these big rocks that he's palming like a basketball player with the balls. And he's, just, and he's coming after him. And this is all he is. He has, he, has, he has no sophistication, no thought. He's just kind of, oh, I'm running out of space here. Um, so he's no thought. He is just acting the way he's always at. He moves in darkness, Look at this, what an interesting idea, darkness. His mind is dark. His ideas are dark. He's not willing to open up the light and say, why are we doing this? Is there a legitimate reason or not? He moves in darkness as it seems to me, not of woods only. So there's a lot of shadow in the woods. He mentions that earlier, I think. Was it this one or the other one? Okay, anyway. Um, so he moves in darkness, not of woods only or the shade of trees. It's not just the shade of trees that is making him dark. He will not go up, go behind his father's saying. Okay, so here we've got that steep with tradition again. And he's, he says it again. You know, um, this is what I've always been told. This is how it is. Okay, so this idea. Um, so now you can see why I would get frustrated when I would move into a new place. And we would have neighbors say, oh, I need to build a fence. Because, you know, good fences make good neighbors. Well, why? <laughs> they could never answer that. Okay. So those are some things to, to look into this one. There's a lot of other really fun imagery. So, so look in these lines here for some neat imagery, um, some neat feel. Look at the tone and the mood that he's got going on in here. Um, pull out some of the, the lines that you like. Um, I haven't gone all through those, but I wanted to give you kind of the overall feel of this poem and, and why it frustrates me when I hear people say this, <laughs> okay? Um, so look at the, the meaning. And if you disagree with me, a couple people disagreed with me on Emily Dickinson and they were really interesting disagreements. Go ahead because poetry is not, it's not math. We've talked about it before. One plus one, it doesn't equal two. It's more like one plus one equals, well, it depends if it's a rainy day. I don't know. Okay. So that, that's what I see. You may feel free to go ahead and argue with me. All right. So let's go to the second poem. Oops. Somehow i got to figure this out. Okay, hold on. I thought I could just move this slide up. Slide up. Good. Baby, those are so good. Okay. The Road Not Taken. This is another very famous poem by Robert Frost. There have been um, books written about wheezing this title. There have been lecture series. There have been classes. There's been like a podcast. All kinds of stuff about The Road Not Taken. And I think almost everybody misses the point of this. So let's read it and I'm going to show you what I think is going on and you will be able to argue against me or with me and pick out stuff. And again, I'm not going to pull out everything, just some of the major parts. So the road not taken. Two roads diverged in a yellow wood. And sorry, I could not travel both and be one traveler. Long I stood and looked down one as far as I could to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, um, just as fair, and having perhaps the better claim because it was grassy and wanted wear, though as for that, the passing there had warned them really about the same. And both that morning equally lay in leaves, no step had trodden black. Oh, I kept the first for another day, yet knowing how way leads on to way, I doubted if I should ever come back. I shall be telling this with a sigh, Age, somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. So the key lines here are, this is what's usually quoted in something, okay? Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. 
So what I hear so many people when they're using this is talking about taking the road less traveled. Sometimes you may have heard of that. There's a famous book many years ago about this, the road less traveled. Um, you know, be of your own drummer, you know, follow your own drummer. Um, all these different kinds of ideas to, you know, just break out and do something different. Go down the road, nobody else is going. But what they fail to notice at the beginning of this stanza is this line. I shall be telling this with a sigh. Okay? When you think about somebody's sighs, it's not generally a happy sigh. Ha! Ah, no, I don't even know how to do a happy sigh. It tends to be more of a, of a sad sigh. Maybe a sigh of regret. Okay? So when he tells the story later, he'll say, think of it, and I hear it this way. Oh. <sighs> I'll be telling this with a sigh. Some were ages and ages hence. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by. And that made all the difference. Now, if you hear it that way, it sounds like he regrets it. It sounds like, whoa, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. <laughs> so, so what I'm saying with this poem, it's not, and I'm not saying, no, don't, you know, follow the crowd. I'm not saying that. Don't follow the crowd. But consider that it's not always the, the clearest thing what to do. Okay, so let me, let me erase some of this. I'm trying to get it all Heather so you won't get annoyed with me for leaving something because last time I did and it made her annoyed. Okay, let's draw this out. Okay, let's see if I can find some brown here. We're going to make our little path. Okay, so we have two roads to Virgin Yellow Woods. So here's our road. We And let's take that one that way. And this is where they diverge. So I'm drawing this wonderful artwork here. And yellow wood. So if it's yellow, then I'm thinking that the trees are, this is the top of trees, trust me. So I'm thinking like the trees, it's autumn, okay? So think of the imagery there, it's autumn time and they're dropping leaves everywhere. This is leaves dropping in the road. You don't have to believe me, it's just, it is, okay. So it's the, the leaves are filling this path, okay? Because he says, duh, 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 where'd it go? The leaves, okay. He says here, in leaves no steps on the, the third, uh, third stanza, in leaves no steps had trodden black. So nobody had gone either one, okay? Um, there was, you could choose which way should you go, go, and it wasn't very clear which way to go. So what he had done, we'll make him blue. There's our little stick man. Okay, so he, he comes here to this fork in the road and he can see that they go down different directions. And, ooh, gosh, which way do I wanna go? Okay, so, so he looks down this one and he's trying to see how far it could go and then it bends into the undergrowth. He can't see any further, so his vision is only that far. Okay, and then the other one is a little more grassy, maybe. Okay, that's grass, sure. And he looks down this one and he sees the grass and it's like, so this one, this one seems to be more trodden on. This one less trodden on because it's more grassy. But when you look down both of them, they seem rather equal. Okay, they seem rather um, just as fair. Okay, um, and passing there had warned them really about the same. So he had no way of guessing which would be the better, better way to go. All right. Think about this in your own life. How many of you are looking down a road and you're going, ooh, I could go to this college, or I could go to that college, or I could study this, or I could go after that, or I could work here or live there. And, and you can only see a little bit further down. I mean, down here, way over here, this is where all the excitement stuff is going to be. You know, these different roads, maybe this road comes back this way or something. You have no idea what's going to happen down here. You're right here trying to make this decision which way to go. This is like the worst scribbling I've ever done on board. Okay, but I think you get the idea is that you're in the same position, especially those of you who are seniors or, you know, even you juniors are starting to think ahead, what am I going to be doing next year? You don't know. And, and that's, that's what he's saying is that you just don't know. You've got to make a decision. You could stand here. You could just stand here for days and weeks and years. And, I, and sometimes I think that some people do that. Unable to make a decision, they just kind of sit and they're stagnant for years. And then they just, they don't do anything. Okay? So he has to make a decision. All right. So he's, here we go. Um, uh, and both that morning equally lay. 
and leaves no step had tron black so there's he has no idea which way to go because nobody has walked either way to make the leaves black okay so then he finally decides oh i kept the first for another day i'll do this one later okay yet knowing how way leads on to way i doubt it if i should ever come back he, he knows and i'm not going to go back there but you still kind of hold that in your head okay i'm, I'm going to go down this way um no i'm going to go down that way i'll go this way but but i can always come back this way someday i can always take this road another time even though you know you won't but it's nice to think in the back of your head i'll be back i'll do that later um so he knows he's not going to come back and so he takes the one that's less traveled by the one that's got the the green bosky growth stuff there okay we'll just make it all green and let's we'll put some more other leaves in there put some orange leaves there we go just to make it as ugly as i possibly can okay so this is where he says i'm telling us with a sign okay i want you to decide is this a positive thing is he happy that he did the road less travel by? Yay, this is a great idea. Or is he sad by this? And he's like, hmm, I don't know. This made a difference, but we don't know if it's a positive difference or not. Okay, most people assume that it is a positive difference. But boy, that sigh, that sigh is what's doing for me. I don't know. I, I don't think Robert Frost was happy about this. Okay. All right. So there's a lot of other things in here you could pull out. Um, look at the, the look at the structure. Okay, so do slam and structure, language, effect, meaning. Um, I've given you my ideas, and you can decide what you think. Okay, so choose one of these to write up, and then have that turned into me by Thursday before midnight. Okay, I'll give you a little bit of time on that. All right, thanks guys. See ya.